Washington, D.C., a city that's the epicenter of our nation's history with markers of change all around its landscape. I stopped by one such D.C. institution, the Florida Avenue Grill, a place that's steeped in history but has come to symbolize the spirit of change itself. Hey, Sarah. How's it going? Hey, how's everything? Great. You know, as you know, it's the oldest soul food restaurant in the world. I remember, yeah. We just had our 70th anniversary. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> last year, you know, so That's it's a lot cool. of a lot of history in here. This is Adam Clayton Powell's stool. Wow! You know, first one of the first black congressmen. Yeah. There's only two requirements to be on the wall of the grill. One, you ate here, and two, we have your picture. <laughs> so the baby. I so, see the baby. Yeah, <laughs> babies on the wall. Hi. I'm interrupting you guys for a second because you're sitting at a historic spot. Oh. This particular booth is historic. Did you it's know that? Why? Why is it? This why is, is it? where uh, Dr. Martin Luther King planned the March on Washington. Oh, wow. What? Yeah. Okay, I like oh. this booth now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It's a taste of home. I, I enjoy the food. It's one of the few places where you can still get home cooking. They call it soul food, but home cooking and enjoy it. Since purchasing the grill in 2005, Imar has embraced a high road approach to running the business. I sat there and said to myself, well, can a restaurant really be healthy if it's not healthy for the people who work there? You know, people would go into a restaurant and say, well, wait, is this, you know, is this free range chicken? You know, is this, are these organic? strawberries are these locally grown yeah but have no thought about the people that get the food to them so you know what's amazing about this place is just how many changes you've implemented unlike most other greasy spoon diners florida avenue grill actually pays its employees above the minimum wage provides paid vacation paid sick days and opportunities for career advancement when you're a server, you don't really anticipate receiving a check. And when you do, it's really just a formality, a piece of paper for tax purposes. But, um, you know, here our servers actually do get a check. We pay more than a minimum wage, you know, and it's not, you know, it's not an exuberant amount of money, but it's an amount of, an amount of money that you can depend on. It might be a cell phone bill or it might be a tank of gas that you know is going to be there to help you, you know, sustain and keep moving as you're moving. Through. Yeah, the National Restaurant Association, companies like Denny's and Olive Garden, they say things like, you know, change is not possible. When you talk about $15, they say, no, there's no way. We right. can't change our, our model. Right. People say the same thing about a lot of things. People say the same thing about integration, you know? Uh -huh. They said that, you know, the reason places like this exist is because we couldn't go downtown, you know? But guess what? Laws are passed and integration became the law. Right. You know, so change is possible. I think if you think about it too hard, if you pontificate on it, <laughs> then you'll never do it. But if you just kind of say, this is the right thing to do, let me figure out how, then you'll get there. The irony of it is that large companies are in the best position to pay people more anyway, yeah. Yeah. who are in fact most resistant to these type of things. As one of the nation's largest full-service restaurants, companies like Denny's definitely can afford to make changes that benefit their employees. With 1,700 restaurants, Denny's brings in about $2.7 billion in sales every year. I went across town to see what the Denny's manager thought about the fact that Denny's workers make three bucks an hour in Washington, D.C. Hi, are you the manager? Yes, I am. I'm Saru. Nice to meet you. Likewise, thank you. I'm not a representative to speak speak for the company behalf, yeah. you know, and and yeah. I, I I am going to say um, again, whatever um, DC's laws law is uh, concerning um, minimum wage, we are absolutely within the guidelines of the law. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And I hope you guys not recording. Okay. Sounds Very good. Nice asked the server if she would support the upcoming November vote to raise the wage to $15 for all workers in D.C. I would definitely be in support of it, but it sounds very far-fetched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's so low right now. Yes, exactly. Hopefully not that far-fetched. Actually, more than 80% of voters in D.C. in recent polls have said that they support the wage going up to $15 for all workers. Um, people need to be able to earn a good living. And it doesn't mean they have to become wealthy, but they at least have to be able to feed their families and take care of their families and not work three jobs to do it. 
does Emar think about $15 for all workers in D.C.? Well, the reason in general that I support legislation around minimum wage, mm -hmm. is, especially tipped minimum wage, is because it's easier if it's legislated. It's something that everyone has to deal with, right? Washington, D.C. is at a fork in the road. Join us in helping it take the high road.